you very warm welcome to Hartsfield Rugby Ground in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe as the local team, the Sables, take on the Simbas of Kenya in the last game of week five here in Bulawayo. The crowd slowly pulling in, 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 I'm joined in commentary by Liam Middleton. Liam, we're excited for this encounter. So yeah, we are at Hartsfield. Very historic field. There's seen some colossal rugby battles in, this, in the years gone by. Well, uh, Liam, Zimbabwe just going down to uh, Namibia last week. It's a critical game for Kenya as well as they aim to keep their uh, hopes of Africa Gold Cup alive today. And uh, your thoughts on maybe who the team is to watch today? Well, I think this is going to be a huge battle. Two sides that really need a win to stay in the competition and two teams playing very good rugby. So I think the home side will have the advantage being at home but Kenya, a very good side, and I think they'll uh, be wanting to pull off a good win here today. Well, we caught up with uh, the Kenyan coach, Jerome Parvot, uh, on his thoughts for today. The Gold Cup's still alive for Kenya. What do you guys need to do to get the full five points today? Yeah, today, um, for us, it's, uh, and I think also for them, it's important, uh, the points that you can get. So um, we're not too worried about the five points at the moment. It's just to get through the game and hopefully get a win out of this game. Big win for Kenya in their last game. A fantastic game against Uganda, 33 all. A couple of changes in the Kenyan lineup that we can expect. Maybe a couple of uh, different ideas. Um, no, we're pretty much the same team. Only the the one lock is currently in, uh, in America with the school, so he's not here. Oliver Mangneni, he's not here. Uh, but we've got uh, um, the guy back, uh, one lock back from concussion, so he's back. So he's taking his place. He, he started with Oliver, so he's back. So not a lot of changes, it's pretty much the same team. We're fortunate that we don't have a lot of injuries. And um, yeah, so uh, we're looking forward to this game. It's going to be a tough one, it's going to be a hard one. And uh, coming off two easy games, it's not, uh, it's not uh, idyllically for us to be in this situation. But um, we know that um, today we need to, to stand up and fight because it's going to be a tough one. We have very uh, settled side here for for Kenya. Wilson Kapondo, the captain, pairs up in the second row with Muniafu. And you've got to watch this back row of Kera, Chenge, and Chisanga, the powerful number eight. Onsomo and Odima. Onsomo will test the base of the uh, the rucks. And you've got to watch out for OG and Mukidza. OG, top try scorer in this competition. Mukidza, top point scorer in the competition. Well, we're all set for the national anthems here at Hartsfield Stadium in Bulawayo. The first look of uh, Zimbabwe home games are back-to-back -back this weekend, and they'll be in Harare next weekend as uh, the dignitaries will come and meet the two teams. And Kenyans, no doubt, will be up for this battle. They know what the cherry on the top or the dangle of the carrot is as their Gold Cup, Africa Gold Cup hopes are still alive yet to go down in any games they drew their first one 33 all with uh, uganda in the first game and uh, they'll be void today liam in making sure that they pick up maximum points especially seeing the last time these two countries played uh, it was a landslide victory for kenya yeah an uncomfortable memory that is for the zimbabwe team but uh, this home ground has always been good to the sables and uh, i know they're very determined to pick up a win today the Deputy Minister of Sport for Zimbabwe. As, uh, he has graced us with his presence today. So big occasion for Zimbabwe sport. The sports ministry doing fantastic work in the country, trying to lift the profile of sport as we uh, all stand for the national anthems of the two countries.
set to go here at Hartsfield in Bulawayo as uh, the anthems are over. Last couple of chats from each teams, and uh, we caught up with the Zimbabwean coach, Sipion Mandenge, before warm-up. Great game for you guys last week. Unfortunately, to fall just short against Namibia. What does Zimbabwe need to do to get the full five points today? Uh, well, start off uh, with uh, about last week. We we took we had some takeaways from that. I mean, uh, we had to learn to manage the game. It's uh, one thing that we need to manage well today. But for us to get five points, we just need to believe in our structure, both defense and attack. We need to put uh, four tries against them for us to get those five points. And it's going to be a lot of hard work. We know they like running, but we also have got uh, runners in our team. But be that as it may, we're not worried about how they play. We just want to concentrate on how we're going to play. And we've been working hard on how we're going to play as a team. A couple of changes for you. Uh, Linens Tambuera back in the fold. That's good news for Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah, it is. And also gives us options for, for kicks because every single point that is uh, that we think we can get, we'll go for it. Uh, obviously, Timek will kick from one side, LT will kick from, from one side. And also in, t in terms of clearance kicks, it gives us that option as well because we want to play in the right areas, which is what we didn't have last week. We ended up putting ourselves under pressure because we were playing deep in our, in our, in our, in our zone. Kick balls, we're not uh, playing them out of our zone as well. A strong Zimbabwean side here. Demford Mutamangira, he'll be the rock in the front row with Zisha and Clemenson. Very experienced Fortune Chipendu in the second row with Nyawude. And then this back row, of which contains two open side flankers, Leital, the 35 year old experienced player, with Connor Pritchard, who'll know this ground well, a product of Falcon College at Essa Godini. And then Njabula and Lovo, the big man at number eight, he'll just add some weight to this back row. Hilton Modariki, very good quality player. And then Yawata and Katsopoulos, they pair up in the center for the first time ever. And watch out for Kumadira, he's the key try scorer. A very good Zimbabwe inside. Right, we're almost all set to go as the referee for today will be Pro Lojeto. And uh, he will officiate two Namibian assistants, Oscar Lambert and Neville Hilbron, will uh, run the touch for our referee from South Africa. So we're almost all set for this test match. It is the second game of uh, week five as we await uh, the result of uh, Kenya, rather Namibia versus Uganda. So Linian Tampuera who uh, has been drafted into the side after a long knee injury. Will get the game off. Very interesting uh, with him with his left boot at fullback. And Makwanya at number 10. Great hanging kick and good pressure from Zimbabwe. But, uh, advantage on the knock on, but good work from the Zimbabweans on the chase of that ball. And straight away forcing Kenya to the boot. That's a pretty good kick as well from uh, the Kenyan number 10. Yeah, and Yawude, very tall second row. He went on the chase here. Good, at, good with his aerial skills, but just couldn't take it. And Kenya pushed Zimbabwe right down 10 meters from their try line. Adimo putting in a great kick. That'll give him some confidence in this game, nice and early. And straight away, after some good pressure from Zimbabwe, they find themselves with a defensive line out deep into their own 22. So a win for Kenya on the line out and straight away the Kenyans uh, on the front foot, putting Zimbabwe under a lot of pressure. Good hit from uh, Jacques Letao, but they're still coming Kenya. Time to rebuild again, strong carry from uh, Amusala and it looks like they're over the line. I'm not so sure what the referee can see there. to take it to the back line a little bit of space and the knock-on is there so Zimbabwe will get a reprieve but it uh, looks like the referee has called for a penalty yeah just off the hook there from a poor lineup from Zimbabwe 
They really would have wanted to take that first one of the game. And you can just see Jacques Letal playing at number six. He made two big tackles there in that phase of play just to hold Kenya out. But they take their penalty and a shot at goal. was a strong carry from Amoy Salah on that uh, last move. And Kenya will decide to put the first points on the board. It's got to be said, Liam, opening play, great chase from Zimbabwe. Then a slight mistake, allowing the ball to bounce from Lenin's Tambuera. Great kick from the number 10. Zimbabwe throw it in, bad throw, and all of a sudden they're under pressure. Yeah, that, I think that line was crucial. Um, when you're in that exit position, I think Zimbabwe might have been thinking about how they clear it without winning the ball of the first phase. They'll be disappointed with that. They may take three points here, but get themselves back in the game. The kick is good from uh, the number 14, Mukidza. So Kenya, nice and early in the game, will put the first three points on the board. And probably not a bad result for Zimbabwe after the pressure they were under. They held up uh, the Kenyans over the try line. It could have been worse. So exactly where we were three and a half minutes ago. Lenin's Tambura with ball in hand. They want another good chase, Zimbabwe. This time a little bit deeper on the kick, giving the Kenyans a bit more time. But the pressure is there from Zimbabwe. Kenyans will look to play a very wide game. Again, deciding to go to the boot. Linens Tambuera on this occasion, better position, but uh, a bit of confusion again from the Zimbabweans. Defense is there for Kenya. Another mistake. Turnover is there. Now they got the numbers. And uh, looks like a knock on the Zimbabweans. And uh, it's sixes and sevens at the moment, Liam. Certainly in the backfield there. Linens Tambuera is normally a 10, arguably Zimbabwe's first choice number 10 playing a fullback today is not quite communicating with his uh, his wingers and his back three and they just got a little bit lost there but you've got to take some credit give some credit to Kenya that a red line of chases on that and not nowhere to go for the fullback it's interesting to have a look as well at some of the matchups that we'll see today Liam that man in picture is one of them Hilton Mudariki had a great game against Namibia but he'll have his work cut out today yeah he goes up against Onsomu who's been very lively for Kenya in the first part of this Gold Cup. Both of them are running scrum halves. They've got good services, but they, they test the base of the scrum and the base of the ruck. Uh, this is a good good head-to-head, -head, which I'm looking forward to watching. So the first scrum of the game, and uh, a reset called. Yeah, on two occasions there, Linian's Tambuera almost a little bit confused, and uh, it... it he has got the skill to handle the high ball, but almost caught out of position and not so sure where he should be. Yeah, he'll be, look, he'll be wanting to look at his positioning and just some help from his wingers. You can just talk to him and work that backfield like a pendulum. The three of them have got to collaborate together. So good scrum from Zimbabwe. Going lateral. Uh, Modariki decides uh, to go to the back line. Capsopolis ball in hand. There's Linens Tambuera. And a bit of pace for Zimbabwe on the outside. A little bit of confidence is what they need. So nice quick ball. And straight away they decide to go to the boot. And probably not the best option. As uh, kicking away possession. OG, a man to watch for. Kenya, the speedster on the outside. Takes the ball into contact. And. Uh, comes out on the Zimbabwe side knock on he has a chance for Zimbabwe and uh, the referee will decide on what that advantage was because there might be an outside chance that there was a knock on from Kenya the two referees having a chat I think he had called yeah there it is he had called the uh, 22 and the AR just maybe deciding that there was a knock on there that's better from Zimbabwe yeah, a little bit scrappy here. Just see the little chip through from uh, Kumadiro. He's been so good for Zimbabwe with his try scoring abilities. And that turnover came in the ruck, which 
Mudariki just took around the corner. That's where he's good, sniping around the breakdown. No doubt, Liam, that'll give Zimbabwe that little bit of confidence and handle them down a little bit. They looked a little bit jittery on the start. This is a great field position for Zimbabwe. They want to keep possession, just keep hammering away at the line and just try and make some inches, get over the whitewash. So a decent scrum for Zimbabwe, the first one. And I'll uh, want to replicate that. Number eight picks it up off the back. Here's Connor Pritchard. And they want quick ball now. And comes, looks like Fortune Chipendu. Makes it up into contact. Pritchard again. He was uh, all over the place in the Namibia game. Hilton Mudariki show and go. Try time, Zimbabwe. There's a little number nine. We warned you. Watch him around the fringes. And what a great start for Zimbabwe. Well, that field position from the scrum was good for Zimbabwe. They just used a little back row move, which got Leitao moving us on the front foot. Chipendu came around the corner, very powerful in his carry. And it just opened up a little bit of space around the ruck for Hilton Budariki. And as I said earlier, this is where he's very good. He's very powerful off the mark, gets himself over the try line. Yeah, maybe an area that Kenya struggled against Uganda in the 33-all draw in the opener of uh, the Africa Gold Cup was those middle channels. They didn't defend them very well. And Hilton Mudariki, just a little bit of a show from uh, around the fridges. Connor Pritchard, we told you, was uh, great with the ball in hand against uh, Namibia. And just a little jinx from Hilton Mudariki. And a great try for Zimbabwe. Can you be disappointed with that? Just a simple defensive error. Didn't plug in the spaces around the ruck. You've got to do that against Mudariki. Sorry. So the two points are added, and uh, Makwanya puts Zimbabwe in the lead, seven points to three. Dima goes deep and uh, a chance for Linian's Tamboria to clear his lines. And he has a very big left boot and a great clearance from the fullback. Kenya up to go deep from the kickoff, but they find Linian's Tamboria and he's got a huge boot on him. Takes Zimbabwe up to the 10 meter. They'll be defending this lineup, but they have cleared their lines from that kickoff. That might help uh, settle him down a little bit as well as uh, he has struggled in the first 10 minutes maybe caught out of position on two occasions just needs to settle down he's been out of rugby for a little while with a knee injury but uh, great to have him back in the fold for the sables we go to maniafu the number five for kenya to try that rolling ball but zimbabwe holding them up the first call from the ref and, uh, back line the option Look at Connor Pritchard he's right in there you'll find him all over the field today great work from Capsopolis as well he's putting huge pressure on the Zimbabweans and the referee deciding maybe just coming in from the side can you a little bit shorter players on this left side they went into the midfield with Mokidza and then Onsomu looked to the left side into the open side for runners, had none of them. Kenyan forwards tied up in that mall. They're lucky to come away with a penalty there. Uh, looks like that's gone over the back. So uh, the referee will give Zimbabwe the option on uh, what they would like. Doesn't look happy the fly half for Kenya or Dimo. And uh, he probably wouldn't because he's just kicked it over the dead ball line. So another reprieve for Zimbabwe. And now an opportunity again, Liam, to set that scrum and maybe test this back line of theirs. Yeah, I think Mutumangira and, and Clemenson have been very strong in the first two scrums. They can really hold this now. Be inter interesting to see if Makwanya opts to run or kick their way out of this position. I do know that Mudariki likes running the ball as well. So he's got a little bit of space on the blind side. Hey, 
referee will reset that scrum. Big Amasala on the near side. Just collapsing that scrum. Yeah, the front row, we spoke about Zimbabwe versus Namibia last week uh, against a team that was known, Namibia, to probably be the strongest pack in the Gold Cup. And Zimbabwe stood up very well to them. Yeah, there's two very good props there. Clemenson is a technical prop. He's got a lot of weight behind him. And Mutamangira knows all the arts of that area. He's very, very good technically. So Zimbabwe have got a good front row. Between the legs, Tom and Lovi. Yeah, there goes Zimbabwe. Finds Capsopolis in middle play. Good recycle of the ball. Tambuera goes to the boot and uh, pushes Kenya back. So referees decided they to come all the way back. Not so sure what the call is. It's a penalty for Zimbabwe. And uh, just penalizing the Kenyans. That's what we spoke about the scrum. You've got two experienced uh, props in uh, Zimbabwe and something that Kenya will have to work at. Yeah, I'd say Zimbabwe have dominated the first three scrums of this game. And I like... Glovo's little piece of play there, just flicked the ball between his legs to Mudariki to get that ball away because the scrum had turned under Kenya's weakness at Amo Salah. Another good outcome for Zimbabwe. He finds touch uh, just halfway between the 22 and the halfway line of Kenya, does uh, Makwanya. So Zimbabwe ball. We'll have to see where the ball's going to go. Doesn't look like there's any Fortune Chipendu in that lineout. Yes, he is. They go to the back corner, Pritchard. And uh, sacked straight away. But there goes Fortune Chipendu, Zimbabwe's most experienced player. Nice, quick recycle ball straight to the back line. A little bit wayward. But they have a chance to uh, reset. Great step from uh, the winger, Bunduza. First carry for the number eight and Lovu of Zimbabwe. He was good as well in Namibia. Now that little bit of space. Support is there for Zimbabwe. Mudariki, I think, was thinking the blind side. Here's Jacques Letal, the ever present. They got numbers, Kenya, to defend this. And uh, that's good defense from them. A little bit isolated Zimbabwe runners. But uh, happy to take it into contact again, Jacques Lecao. Now they've got some numbers on the near side. Little pop. And uh, Fortune Chipendu unable to hold on there. So Connor Pritchard, what a great steal. Yeah, Zimbabwe playing with very good width, good structure. They just went wide, wide, hit three touchdowns, but didn't go forward. In fact, they went backwards. And, but they did create the numbers in the last phase, just couldn't go to hand. And then Pritchard just shows where his skills are. He's outstanding on the floor. Something of interest as well is uh, Zimbabwe going very wide is a game plan of Kenya. They like playing the wide game. And maybe an opportunity as opposed to trying to find that space on the outside, Zimbabwe, is those gaps that Kenya are going to open up on the midfield. Yeah, and Kenya's defense was very good there. They held their shape. They came forward on each phase, and that just meant that Zimbabwe had to try and go around them and got a little bit lateral. Well, he has an opportunity for Kenya to make right their scrumming problems with their own put-in. Zimbabwe will want to continue dominating the scrum. That's better from Kenya. And again, their fly half deciding to go to the boot. And that's a good take from uh, the number 14, Mukidza. The recycle ball is, is pretty good from Kenya. They want a little bit quicker than this. Reminder, like we said, they like going wide, and that's good work from the fly half. He spotted a little bit of space, but uh, he's overcooked that kick. So Linens Tambuera will be allowed to just simply touch that down. But again, Zimbabweans found wanting at the back. Yeah, the backfield wasn't filled there, and it was a good kick from Adima. Good idea. He did go to that kick because a lot of his Kenyan support runners were in front of him, so he had to go to the boot, but it was a smart kick, just not perfectly executed. 
Kwanye goes deep. And uh, oh, a fumble from uh, their big number eight. He's uh, a big man, Chisanga. And referee deciding that went backwards. Kenyans not shy to uh, take Zimbabwe on in the contact. A little bit slow for Kenya. They're on the back foot. And that's better. It's a good carry from Muniafu. And good hands. He finds Chisanga. He's a big boy. Bouncing off Zimbabweans. Gets himself into the 22. Now they got all the forwards lined up to Kenya. Advantage for the Kenyans. Some great carry from the Simbas. Inside ball to their hooker. He finds the scrum half. And Osumo will get in for the first try for Kenya. Well, for the first time in this game, Kenya found their shape in attack. They've put some good passes together, and Chisanga is an incredibly powerful carrier. You need two, two defenders to take him to ground, and then a really smart little player around the ruck. Yeah, fantastic little inside ball. I think it was the hooker, Karia. Some great carries, and just that move from Chisanga allowed the forwards to get back into shape. There was the inside ball, then the offload to the number nine, and uh, Onsuma was there to score the first try for Kenya. Good rugby from the Simbas. Yeah, we talked about that heading, that's head-to-head uh, -head with uh, Mudariki and Onsomu, and both of them have scored the first two tries of this game, having a big impact on either side's performances. The kick is good from uh, Mokidza. He adds the two points. Here's the try scorer on Somo. Uh, Liam uh, mentioned that it would be an epic battle between him and Hilton Mudariki. Well, let me tell you, the two tries so far, guess what? The two scrum offs. Very lively around the base. Both, both tries have been scored from the base of the ruck, just testing those one and two guards there. And Zababu want to look at that at halftime. So we approach the 20 minute mark the first quarter and Kenya back in the lead 10 points to 7 nice hanging kick from Linens Tambuera and unfortunately for Zimbabwe a great opportunity there just the knock on it looks like uh, their number 5 Nyaude who was there and uh, would have had a little bit of space as well so disappointing for Zimbabwe on that kickoff Nyaude is very athletic he gets up off the ground both him and Chipendu have got a lot of height on them and they'll be wanting to get some return on their kickoffs now. Well, Zimbabwe are three from three on their scrums. Kenya, still uh, the jury out on whether they've sorted their scrumming out. On the last scrum, which was uh, the own put in, a lot of pressure from Zimbabwe, and no doubt that front row of the Sables will be continuing that pressure on Kenya. A great push again, and uh, referee decides but uh, on Sumo has uh, put the ball under his own player's feet. And that would be the pressure, Liam, that Zimbabwe scrums putting on uh, Kenya. Yeah, I think that's indicative of the pressure that Amosala has been on here on the loose head side. And his scrum off just trying to help him out by feeding under his feet. Zimbabwe have opted to take the scrum, which is a good decision because they have been very dominant in this area. Yeah, I didn't waste any time there, did the captain of Zimbabwe. Tamangira decided straight away we'll have another scrum thanks and they'll continue applying the pressure on Kenya they decide the blind side on this side and uh, Lovu great carry from him now they got uh, the men on the inside Denford uh, Tangadira the captain Great carry from him, not held in the tackle. Front football for Zimbabwe. Can they finish this off? Little bit of space for the center. And uh, the referee decides that that's a clean turnover. So an opportunity for Kenya to get out of jail here. And again, where's the man at fullback? Out of position again, great catch. It looks like their winger 
that uh, was playing there at fullback Madeira. Not so sure if uh, that was the best decision with all the pressure on Kenya. Yeah, I think Zimbabwe had a chance just to put Kenya under pressure. Their defense was pretty scattered around the field from the counter-attack which Kumadira started. But that little bit of go forward there, that little bit of momentum was gained from Fortune Chupenda's little tip on to Demford Mutamangira, who's outstanding as a carrier, very, very powerful. Not only is he a good scrummager, but he's a good carrier. Well, five visits for Zimbabwe to the opponent's 22. And uh, they want to do well at this line-out. They go all the way to the back. Knock on. He has a chance. Jacques Letao picks up the loose ball. Should be an advantage for Zimbabwe with the knock-on. And uh, referee says advantage over. Numbers now for Zimbabwe. And uh, try time. Looks like number 11, Hunduza, will get over for Zimbabwe's second try. Great hands from the Sables and in in the corner on the near side. Well, you could just feel that when Chenge dropped that ball over the top, which was a good option for Kenya. When he put that ball forward, Zimbabwe just had men around the corner and it was up to them just to handle it effectively and they were going to score. Well done, well executed. Took their opportunity to turn the pressure on Kenya again. It's actually number 14, uh, Kumadiro, who scores that try for Zimbabwe. Just through the hands, they were nice and patient. Zimbabwe advantage was over. That was the secret from Linian's Tambuera. That's what he offers, offers to the Zimbabwe side. The level head, good hands, and it was just the timing of that offload to his winger, Kumadiro. Another man that you said we should watch. Maybe you've written the script earlier. Yeah, Kumadiro is an exciting player. Very, very quick. He started the counter-attack earlier on, but when he sees the try line, he can find the chalk. So Makwanya is one from one. A much more difficult kick for him. Another one right in front of the posts. And it's a pretty good kick. And uh, looks like it's just missed on the left-hand side. So the extra two points not added by uh, Mukwanda, But uh, Zimbabwe back in the lead, 12 points to 10. There's a try scorer, Kumadiro. A fantastic uh, run from him on the outside. Must be said, I, I think the rest of the team did all the hard work for him. Yeah, he just needed to finish it. They needed accurate handling, and they did that. And when, he f when he's got a chance to get over the try line, Kumadiro, he does. Well, Zimbabwe may be finding a couple of holes in the Kenyan defense. seen uh, deep kicks from Adimo and, uh, decides to do that again Connor Pritchard will uh, take the ball and, and carry forward and he's definitely not scared of running with the ball is Connor Pritchard with happy to run from their own 22 oh, confusion from Kenya and all of a sudden just a couple of mistakes unforced errors coming into the Kenya game and uh, what a great territorial gain for the Sables yeah those little errors there they, they just compound themselves during the game and you can feel Kenya just feeling the pressure but Chisanga looked like he was going to take it he crossed in, in front of Opondo's eye line and once he moved out of the way Opondo couldn't see it Kenya knock on Zimbabwe scrum in the half a chance to apply some pressure uh, prob probably one man you don't want to kick the ball to is Chisanga, the number eight of Kenya on that occasion, opting out of catching the ball. So, again, a dominant Zimbabwe scrum so far. Again, a great shove from the Zimbabweans. They'll try and milk this. And uh, Lovu just losing the ball. They'll need support. Looks like a turnover. That's good work from the Kenyans. Uh, they'll now go to the back line they got a few numbers on the outside that's better defense from Zimbabwe they've also been found wanting out wide against Namibia and the referee decides that he'll bring them all the way back weren't sure of the penalty advantage so disappointing from Zimbabwe there Liam uh, a, a dominant scrum set it up really nicely and Lovo just losing the ball out the back 
and uh, it's actually turned around into a penalty for the Kenyans. Yeah, I think that was the best scrum we've seen from Zimbabwe. They had Kenya on the march, and Lovo just wanted to keep it in and take the penalty from the scrum, but popped out from his feet, and then Onsamu ripped it off him, and Kenya's ball. It's a good kick from uh, Adimo, as he'll take play just uh, outside the Zimbabwe 22. And an opportunity for them now to maybe maul that ball to the try line. Or just to get the foot carrying there. It looks like they're going to go for a full complement in the line out. So maybe the maul is the call. All the way to the back for Kenya. And uh, sacked by Zimbabwe. He was happy, the referee, but a second pod formed. And now running with the ball are the Kenyans. Zimbabweans out of support. They've almost got the full 22 yards. Stopped on the try line. And uh, looks like the number eight, Chisanga, with ball in hand. And the referee decides that it's try time. Kenya, number seven, Chenge, will get over for Kenya's second try. And Zimbabwe found wanting on that mall. You've got to be impressed with Kenya's setup at that mall. It was very good. They're very tight. All their spines in line. Very powerful position. But Zimbabwe would be very disappointed how they defended that. They had never at, at any time did they have any more than three defenders defending that mall. They let it get a rumble on. And once it goes that way, it's very difficult to stop. I think as well as where they were caught on the hop was uh, the second pot formed very quickly. Zimbabwe thought they'd sacked them all. And straight away, the Kenyans had the second pot there. And some fantastic work by uh, the Simbas. It was a chance for them just to take some lead here. They've been very nervous, Kenya. They're very much a confident side, and they'll take some confidence from that mall score. Well, it was almost a 40-meter uh, run from the forwards. An opportunity now for Mokidza to extend the lead for Kenya. The kick is good. So uh, you'll add the two, and Kenya now back in front, 17 points to 12. Well, uh, on two occasions on the kickoff, Zimbabwe's been very good on the chase. Tambora's hung it up nicely, and just knock-ons from Zimbabwe. Can they come good on this occasion? Great height again. Again loose from uh, Kenya, but this time it's gone backwards. Again, the fly half goes for depth, but Zimbabwe on this occasion, better position. Linians Tambuera goes to the sky. Big up and under. Chase maybe not that good from Zimbabwe. Now an opportunity for the Kenyans to run back at Zimbabwe. Slow ball. But, uh, they have a couple of numbers. Again, have a look at uh, these loose forwards of Kenya. Just bouncing Zimbabweans off. To the boot again. Tambuera better positioned. That's a good kick from uh, Makwanya. He's found a little bit of space. And Lovu, the man who does the cleaning up, where's the support from Zimbabwe? Very scrappy at this stage. Now, a little bit of space. Finds the flanker on the outside and the try scorer. Great work from the Zimbabwe captain. The crowd enjoyed that. Numbers for Kenya. Bit of an aerial game going on there from both sides. Tambuera's got a huge boot on him. Bit of a couple of nice up and unders. Kenya not that comfortable under the ball today. But... Once that gets loose, both sides have got to tighten it up and make sure that their chases are good. Oh, 14 kicks from hand already for Kenya. Only eight from Zimbabwe. And uh, a little bit surprising that he's kicking so much, but at this stage, it's working for Kenya. 
And Adimo had the overlap there, which uh, he opted for the crossfield kick, which re created that penalty. I thought he could have just got hands, and they would have made it close to the try at the very least. But Kenya do get this line out. They may go back to their more. Uh, Got to be said, a little bit scrappy from both teams. Their hands haven't been great. Knock-ons. But uh, good throw from uh, Kenya. They find their number five. No, they've already scored from a rolling ball, and the referee decides uh, that will be a penalty to Zimbabwe. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe losing the bind and uh, obstruction. Yeah, I'm not sure what he signaled there, but possibly truck and trailer because second row Muniafu has been quite good in their line -outs. He got pulled down very early, and then the more carried on, it could have been a truck and trailer obstruction call. Well, the last try, we actually gave Kenya praise on the way that they had formed that second pod so quickly on this occasion the referee deciding is what they did was illegal and you can see that the uh, second pod was just joined to the men that weren't sacked so uh, good refereeing from uh, Zimbabwe's throw on their own 10 yard line Connor Pritchard's the man so they go to the back line he has uh, Ndlovu he's a strong carrier of the ball kick in from Makwanya and a uh, little bit of a mistake from the fullback he's isolated now but uh, he's done well to find a little bit of space the kick comes in and uh, much better positioning from Zimbabwe that's a little bit aimless from uh, Makwanya but uh, again numbers are there for Zimbabwe Isolated again, Kenya. And uh, just that little bit of time allowing them to regroup. Now they found some space. The extra man on the outside, Zimbabwe, a little bit short on defense. That's their scrum off. Offloads at one man to beat. And referee decides it's a forward pass. Zimbabwe getting away with uh, a few Kenyan mistakes at this stage. Yeah, Pondo didn't take the, the clean ball at the back of the field. Neither side really mastering their kicking game but it does open the game up for opportunities like that you see Makidza on Somu again he travels close to the ball always in support and unfortunately Kere who was going to go under the post was just in front of the ball yeah but again they're uh, number nine on Somo very prominent in uh, this open play the question is from a dominant breakdown where yes it was Kenya's ball but Zimbabwe were there putting the pressure on all to within five seconds Kenya nearly scoring yeah I think that comes from the kicking game which does open up spaces in the field for counter-attack and you just need one defender out of place and for these two very athletic sides any spaces they're going to capitalize on and that's what's happening well, the big number one Amos Salah is uh, the man requiring a little bit of magic ice on this occasion not, not bad conditions for rugby here in Bulawayo as we enter the second half of winter. So uh, the temperature pretty mild. It's not a hot day as we uh, approach late afternoon. Ground may be a little bit hard. So Zimbabwe ball, that's the one place that they have been dominant is uh, the scrums. And I want to continue that because it's one area that's not keeping them in the game, but uh, really putting Kenya under pressure. Good scrum again. And uh, I'm happy to run back at the Kenyans. It's a strong run from the diminutive Vanduza. Good, quick, recycled ball. He has uh, Capsopolis. We haven't seen him too much with ball in hand. And looks like a turnover for Kenya. Support wasn't there. Now an opportunity like we've seen. Fantastic hit from Fortune Chipendu. He's absolutely wiped the prop out. But there's numbers on the outside for Kenya. And decide to go for the inside ball. And the referee's got an advantage. Looks like a high tackle. 
and uh, there is the penalty and maybe just a little bit of anger there from Nlovu who was uh, taken out by a Kenyan but it uh, looked like a high tackle from Zimbabwe again space on the outside for Kenya yeah a huge hit from the experienced fortune Chipendu still Kenya keep the ball they go around the corner creates numbers for them Mukidza makes a great run just not able to keep the ball alive Kenya it's the it's the high tackle from uh, Honduza that picks up the penalty well, the question is, on a very labored sort of moving forward ball for Kenya, why Zimbabwe was so out of position? Yeah, the defense was caught a little bit narrow there, as we saw a lot of that in uh, the Namibia game last week. They do get narrow, and it does give teams opportunities to get around the outside of them. Chipenda's big hit just ignited a little bit of energy in them, but they were too narrow. Right, so uh, Kenya throw in just outside the 10 yard line of Zimbabwe so right there no doubt uh, I think it's going to be number five Muniafu that they'll look for no short ball to the big number eight Chisanga and that's good work from Zimbabwe lots of pressure and they've done well looks like a turnover fantastic work from Zimbabwe they read that short throw and uh, they'll again breathe another breath all the Zimbabweans making it very difficult for themselves as they get themselves into some great position and then uh, like uh, Liam said very narrow on defense just giving that space on the outside to the Kenyan team that love running the ball well, Zimbabwe got to exit well here we just got three minutes to half time and they want to get out of here and make sure they can just not enforce a penalty to take another three points on the board for Kenya but they've got a good scrum which means they should have a good exit that's a better scrum from Kenya but uh, penalty advantage for Zimbabwe again on good carry from him he's got a great step on him as well good pressure from Kenya the arms still out for Zimbabwe so they might as well play some open play rugby here as they trail now but if there's space on the outside and uh, that's great work for Kenya referee decides that that's not enough advantage I would have thought that that was plenty of advantage he's gonna go all the way back and award the penalty which has come from another dominant scrum from Zimbabwe well, the question of advantage is always a very debatable one there was four passes there was a go forward and there was the kick from Zimbabwe so referee didn't see it that way others might have but Zimbabwe get off the hook here chance to get down the field and they'll keep the ball from the line out so Makwanya will find touch halfway between the 22 and the halfway this was that scrum again Zimbabwe were happy to take it quickly off the back but the ref had his hand out straight away Still in their own half. Still a lot of work to do for Zimbabwe. Fortune Chipendu might be uh, the call on this occasion. Yeah, that's the man. But uh, over the top, an advantage, uh, Kenya, from a bad line-out mistake from Zimbabwe. A play on the 22-yard line now for Kenya. They're a little bit short of numbers. chance to reset again he's been epic Kamusala carrying again for the Kenyans I want to be careful Zimbabwe I don't want to give away a penalty on this occasion he's done well as uh, a demo the fly half he was under pressure there Fortune Chipendu again great on defense so not much uh, progress for Kenya at this stage, but they're still holding possession. Amusala up the middle. And it's quite a good move for Kenya, but it's scrappy. Fortunate for uh, Capsopolis. Couldn't hold on to that ball. Kenya still going backwards. chance to uh, rebuild again but they short of numbers 
the big number eight who carries Chisanga. Gone through quite a few phases now, have Kenya, but to be honest, it's all backwards. That's a good carry from uh, Muniafu. And uh, a bit of a juggle. Here's the open ball, and they hold on somehow, Kenya. Still not forced to kick. And Fortune Chipendu will be penalized for coming in from the side. But good pressure from Zimbabwe. Just not so sure if that infringement was necessary. Kenya weren't going anywhere there. They don't have a lot of shape. They seem to be zigzagging up the field. It means Zimbabwe's narrow defense uh, is easier for them to operate. They can go forward and meet them. And that's what they did. Kenya went backwards. I think Zimbabwe could have kept their heads there. Kenya weren't going anywhere and they probably would have picked up a turnover at some point. But here you've got Mukiza, he steps up, the top point scorer in this Gold Cup. He doesn't miss a lot of goals. Well, this kick should finish the first half. And Kenya will go into the half time with the lead. By far his uh, hardest kick. It's a long way. We are at slight altitude here in Bulawayo. It's definitely got the distance. The direction is not there. So uh, kick not successful, and the referee will decide that that uh, ends the first half here at Hartsfield in Bulawayo. Liam, fair to say that no real team has taken this game by the scruff of the neck, and it's still a 50-50 game. Yeah, it's a huge game, and you can feel the nerves in both sides, making quite a lot of unforced errors. But Zimbabwe do go into the half knowing that they've got dominance of the set piece. Scrum particularly, but also at the line-out. They've got Ndlovu carrying well, and they scored a good try from Kenya's mistake at the exit. Kenya, on the other hand, poor set piece, a lot of unforced errors, not much shape in attack.